Here I've got Sonicware's latest offering. It's their Lo-Fi 6. And if it looks vaguely familiar, that's because it is. It's a lower fi version of the Lo-Fi 12. The 12 went down to 12 bits. This one has a maximum sampling frequency of six kilohertz. So it goes super lo-fi. And if you like your things a bit grungy, this is well worth checking out. It turns this into this. Or this. Or this. And I thought I'd use the 606 to start as it's got a particularly shiny, bright feel with those little tingly metal hats. So if it's gonna make a stark difference on anything, it's gonna be this. And this one has been sent to me by Sonicware who are running a giveaway of Perfect Circuit. And if you click on the link in the description, you'll be able to enter their draw for six Sonicware products. The 8-Bit Warps, the XFM, Bass and Beats, Texture Lab, and of course the Lo-Fi 6 and the Lo-Fi 12. So if you fancy winning six cool little groove boxes, definitely worth clicking on that link. And a massive thanks to Perfect Circuit for sponsoring this video. They're based in the US, but they ship worldwide and they've got hands-on experience with all this kit. The website is also a great resource with loads of info and articles and even some words from me. And just in case you've no idea what I'm talking about when I'm referring to the Lo-Fi 12, it's a four track sampler and sequence set with a distinctly vintage vibe. We sample direct into the unit, no USB, no memory cards here. It samples in mono with a maximum of eight seconds. There's four banks of 16 patterns up to 64 steps. Each of the four tracks can be different lengths. And then we've got all the other things you'd expect. We've got LFOs, we've got randomizers, we've got probability, we've got filters. We've got parameter locks, we've got various voice modes. If we go into this here, this voice is in drum mode. It's split up, if we put it into another mode. Put it into poly, for example. <laughs> if we go to track three on this, I think. We can play up to 10 samples at a time. And we can split loops into chunks like we saw with this one here. Let's take the release off. What's interesting about all these parameters is that they're put on a track, not on the sample itself. So the samples sit in there. Then you put the filter on the track, the LFOs on the track, the voice modes pair track. So the samples sit there unaffected. Really interesting way of doing stuff. We've got effects in here as well. There's a maximizer. This is new for the Lo-Fi 6. And this brings out higher frequencies and higher harmonics that you might have lost when you sampled it at a low rate. We've got chorus, flanger, delay, uh, bit crushing, distortion, low pass filter, high pass filter. We've also got low pass and high pass filter here with various envelopes. So lots of little bits in here. And on the output, we've got uh, this reverb and we've got plate. Then we've got this tunnel infinite. We've got vinyl. I'm just flick past the tape mode as well. But all things that can give a really nice lo-fi feel. But I won't go into too much detail here. I've already made a 30 minute deep dive walkthrough of every aspect of the Lo-Fi 12. And I'll put a link in the description into this as well. We all know CDs have a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. And I'm holding a couple of CDs up just in case you don't know what they are. Um, only two I could find here, Random Selection, Original Movie Soundtrack of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and Electro Breaks, uh, really all, all I could lay my hands on. But we sample at 44.1 because that's double what we can hear up to 20 kilohertz and you need to sample at double the frequency of what you want to hear to get an accurate representation of it. So without going into digital audio theory, um, six kilohertz that we're getting on this, does that mean that we're only really hearing three kilohertz and below? So that's really crunchy that. And that means that there's going to be all those weird digital artifacts above three kilohertz up to six kilohertz. So that's what makes this so characterful. It's not like just throwing an EQ on something and dropping it down to three kilohertz. And just to put that theory to test, a little bit of geeky nerdiness coming up. Uh, here's a filter sweep from an analog synth that starts off at around 20 kilohertz. And sampling that into the Lo-Fi 6. 
does give us some weirdness. If we look at that frequency analysis between one and three kilohertz, as the Synth Pro X is coming down, the low five six is coming up where we're getting that weird alias in. Quite interesting. Do it again. So yeah, it's not the same as just sticking an EQ on it. Simply throwing a steep EQ on the beat gives us this. Which sounds nothing like this. And if we look at the effects on this, I've put this S max on. And this is like a harmonic maximizer. Always it pulls out extra harmonics, a bit like saturation pulls out different harmonics on a tone. So this is it as sampled and then So it makes a big difference that things are getting a little bit muddy. You can have a play with that. And then we've also got this tube down here. So function and tube. So turn it off, bring it on. Brings out the low end, adds harmonics in there as well. So if we turn them both off and then bring them both in again. So as sampled, bringing out some of the more mid-range frequencies and then bringing a little bit more in that kick. Another little thing I've been playing with is blending the output from the Lo-Fi 6 with another track. So um, up on the top here, I've got in the National Health Service screen, the Lo-Fi 6. All lovely and crunchy. And this is, I said the original track, it was just the samples I used. Which is obviously different, it's nice and it's crisp, but bringing the lo-fi in underneath, or sort of blending it in the mix, just adds something special. Once I take it out, it sounds really empty. So yeah, really interesting, just another little thing to play with. So where the Lo-Fi 12 took us back in time to the 90s with its 12-bit mode, this is taking us much further back to the 50s and 60s with that grandmother's kitchen radio aesthetic. Although I've got to say, mine was less Elvis and a bit more this. But listening to some of the preset patterns is actually a really nice way of hearing how it can be used. To reiterate then, the main differences between the 12 and the 6 are the 12 has got a 12-bit mode and the 6 has a maximum sample rate or can only sample at 6 kilohertz. The 6 has also got that tube emulation, so something to enhance the low end, and it's got the maximizer in there to enhance the high end as well, so that it doesn't all get a bit muddy when you sample it at 6 kilohertz. So different machines, very similar. If you know how to use one, you can use the other and this has definitely got a 1950s or 60s vibe to it it even comes in a traditional color of uk national health service hospital walls this is only available in the us so do check out perfectcircuit.com if you're in the mood for some crunchy grungy mellifluous tones and if you are in the mood for something like this definitely check out the giveaway because it's well worth trying to get your hands on
six of these little beauties. And if you enjoyed that, please think about subscribing and all the rest of it. Join me over on Patreon. I've got patches, I've got tutorials, all for the price of a venti sugar-free caramel macchiato with an extra shot, extra hot, and extra whip a month. Or head along to starskycar.com where you can buy patches, samples, or you can do what everyone else does and just download the freebies. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching and thanks very much for staying to the very end. I will see you next time.